room is also a crowded place. There are 10 million people in Lima, the capital city of Peru, among which there are about one third are in the slum. Why there are so large a poverty population? This uh, is because of the history. Back to 1980s, there was a fast urbanization, so many people traveled to big cities like Lima. Also, there was uh, terrorist activities in rural areas, so many people traveled to move, uh, traveled to urban areas. That's why there are slums in big cities like Lima. We well, see these walls are not painted and there is no roof. This is to avoid tax. So how is the living condition here? Although the prices are not high, the tap water are not uh, directly used. They need to transform uh, water through vehicles. So actually, they don't have high income, but they spend uh, much of the money on daily goods. And because of the transportation of water, it costs high. According to the statistics uh, in Islam, the water cost is about uh, 160 yuan per month, and their average income is uh, simply eight, uh, 1,000 uh, RMB. So you see their water cost accounts for 10% of their monthly income. Let's uh, move further. There are some vendors uh, selling things. They are the necessity goods. If people don't want to go uh, down from the mountains, uh, they can buy things here. But for other commodities, they need to go down the mountain. And here is the painting. Yesterday we went here, the headmaster told us this is painted by the teachers and uh, students. You see the signature uh, there from the teachers and uh, students. This uh, writes, uh, in order to understand uh, future, uh, the more you need to understand uh, the past. Let's uh, w have a look at this painting. These are characteristics of uh, Peru. The first one is monkey, the second one is a spider, and the third one is a bird. And uh, there are more paintings uh, found uh, by the archaeologists. Uh, these add to the mystery of Peru. Two of my colleagues went to Nazca and they did the live streaming. They broadcasted these mysterious paintings. And here is a map. As we all know, Peru is a place uh, with uh, numerous and uh, complex uh, geography. Can you explain why there are four colors? This one is uh, Ocean Pacific, and the yellow is the ocean coast, and uh, the green one is uh, the mountain area. The yellow one is the main economic belt, and there are 52% uh, of its total population. We are now in this yellow area. And this one is the Andes Mountain, Huascalan Mountain, the highest mountain in Peru also locates here, and uh, the state park is also here. Peru has uh, some unbalanced development, like we are in this yellow area, where it is uh, not very vast, but with a dense population. 
But in this green area, it's very vast, but the population are scarce. Yes, only 12 percent of the people living live here. And this one is uh, the relics uh, of Inca. This uh, human is uh, welcoming people. It's uh, the Pan America Olympics uh, symbol in 2019. It's for the sacrifice of the religion, and it can prevent ghosts. So this door is found in many of the tombs from the first class, including the 2016 APAC and other international activities and conferences are also held here in Lima, the capital city of Peru. And in 2019, the Pan America Olympics will be held here. After 30 years of efforts, Peru is again entering FIFA. So we can see many of the stickers are related to FIFA, the World Cup. And these are the football players. Yesterday, we went to some parks. And we saw uh, people are exchanging the football cards. Yes, it's a common activity in Peru now. People buy the football players' booklets and stickers, and they will exchange it. Many people in Peru like football very much, and they even set it as their life goal. Days ago, we visited a football school. We found many parents sent their children there, and they paid high in order to train their children to be the professional football players. In the future, their children can fight for their country. This one writes, uh, let's read it together. In Peru, many families uh, are not affordable for uh, schools. Many children need to work, need to drop out of school when they were 10. The job rate in Peru are not high. With the frequent exchange between China and Peru, many Chinese companies are setting up their branches in Peru. So many parents want their children to learn Chinese in order to win opportunities for future. In the slums, because of the worsening of public security, this picture is showing about the anti-violence and uh, harmonious pursuit. You see, these are the wastes from animals. They are not claimed. We did uh, live broadcasting in other cities, uh, like in the big square or in the intangible asset uh, places. We still see these wastes. Peru is a developing country, but in this uh, developing country, you can see different styles of uh, social development. Even you can see three types of uh, social development. In some tourist places, uh, you cannot tell the difference uh, from uh, European cities. But for other regions, they may show the characteristics of uh, developing countries. And in these uh, less developed areas, uh, you can see the problems of uh, the people living in poverty. And these paintings uh, show the urgent challenges and problems of Peru. And this one is uh, uh, related to environmental protection. 
WHO announced Lima is the most polluted city in South Latin America. So this picture is calling for environmental protection. We have to and we must protect our environment. We are at Chorios district. It's near the ocean. People here are mainly living on fishing. Generations of the families are living on fishing. And uh, after 2000, due to El Nino phenomenon, many people cannot do fishing anymore. The degree of the water increased by 2 degrees Celsius in April. If there is a 0 0.5 degree increase, it means the water has been influenced by the El Nino phenomenon, and the fish will be influenced. They will travel to other places. The, the people here cannot get enough fish, so they have to quit this job and uh, make other choices. But due to the limitation of the capabilities, if they want to change their job, it will be very difficult and challenging. Many of them may went to the commodity markets and they will sell the small things on the bus. As we passed by, we saw the bus with a big horn. He's uh, shouldering to sell his goods. We can see vendors here. They play a vital role in slums because they offer convenience here. And these paintings are to advocate to the environment and earth protection. And we see some isolated dogs. They are left by their hosts. In some ordered places in Peru, they will collect the wastes. But here is the slum. You see the wastes are mounting here. And now we are approaching the school. We can see the wall of the school. There is introduction that uh, this uh, school is free for registration for everyone. And these are the courses in the morning and uh, in the daytime. They start a lesson at 8 o'clock in the morning, and uh, they are off at 11 in the morning. We are now at the gate of the primary school. The headmaster of this uh, school is waiting for us. She's welcoming us. Palma al Instituto Confucio que vengan maestros para que los niños puedan aprender e hicimos un piloto en tercer grado de, de primaria. Uh -huh. sí. uh, she briefly introduced that there is a Chinese course in this school. Three years ago, they applied to every equivalent university for Chinese students, and uh, they yielded uh, fruitful results in teaching Chinese course here.
There are two classes uh, of the students who are between 8 to 9 years old, and they are learning Chinese. She said, uh, for these students, they find it uh, of great interest to learn Chinese language and culture because China is playing more and more important role in international stage, and the soft power of China is enhancing, so they are willing to learn Chinese language and culture. Entre niños de inicial de tres a cinco años, niños de primaria de seis años a once años, y niños de secundaria de doce años a dieciséis años. 他说这个学校里边一共是有八百名的学生。There are about 800 students in this school. This is a public school, so everything is free. Sí, hay más niños que quieren aprender porque ellos han visto que sus, sus, sus amigos van aprendiendo, saben el idioma, van cantando, interactúan con los maestros y cada vez que vienen los maestros ellos están muy emocionados. After the Chinese teacher came, the students are so excited. And uh, the teacher came here every Tuesday and uh, Thursday. Every time they teach one hour class, and they hope to offer opportunities uh, to these uh, students in slum area and to improve their competitiveness uh, in for future. Infantil y también drogadicción. El contexto posiblemente no va a cambiar, pero la escuela tiene la posibilidad de ser la mejor escuela. Queremos para, para estos niños que son de padres eh, de hogares pobres y funcionales, la posibilidad de que este sea un colegio de alto rendimiento o, o un colegio presidente de la república, porque nuestro colegio no tiene carpetas, no tiene sillas, tiene una infraestructura que se va cayendo y no tiene un título de propiedad. Hace 70 años que tiene de creación y no tiene un título de propiedad. Yeah. Uh, she briefly introduced uh, about the situation of this school. We know the location of this school is in the slum, and the construction structure is not very stabilized. So there are many difficulties encountering these students. Most of them are from uh, very poor families. And uh, many of their family members may have the criminal backgrounds. So they are lacking opportunities comparing to other uh, people. But she hopes uh, the society can pay attention to these uh, groups of uh, students. And they hope a Chinese teacher can be more. And they can teach Chinese in this school. La posibilidad de que no solamente estos niños que tienen situaciones de pobreza puedan aprender y puedan tener otras oportunidades en el mundo. Muy agradecida al centro, al Instituto Confucio, a los maestros de la China que vienen con mucho cariño y los acogemos también. Queremos que vengan más personas con la posibilidad de ayudar a nuestro colegio. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Gratitude to, to Chinese government. In the past three years, they've sent eight Chinese teachers here to teach Chinese language and culture. In future, we hope more and more schools, like in or not in the slum, can learn about Chinese language and culture. We see this crevice on the wall, 
and because uh, after 50 years uh, these uh, bricks and walls are dangerous uh, students are prevented from entering you were engaged in this project the first time we came here we taught a experience class uh, to these students. We guided them in Chinese language and some traditional activities. And later on, we held the martial art class. We see these students, they are exercising the martial arts. Let's approach them. This one is a Tai Chi. It's the intangible asset from China. Many of the children are from Andes area, so they are relatively black and strong. This body shape is suitable to uh, practice martial art. In Peru, there are many Chinese areas. Because back to the uh, 1950s, many of the Chinese people went to Peru. So there are many children with the Chinese blood. Uh, maybe some of the children here also have a uh, Chinese affiliations. Chinese accounts for 10% of the Peru's uh, population. That's also one of the reasons why Chinese culture wins more and more popularity here. And many of the common people in Peru can say some simple Chinese words like hello and goodbye. I was surprised and shocked. It's been my 10 plus times to uh, Peru. And I found Peru people were so friendly and they know things about China. Yes, many of our foreign colleagues also say uh, ni hao, the Chinese hello in, to us in the morning. Excuse me. Hello. Uh, what lesson are you teaching now? I'm now teaching Chinese martial art. It's uh, Tai Chi. Tai Chi is a uh, slow move. Uh, it's very difficult for the small children to learn. And we also teach some traditional Chinese martial arts like uh, the uh, five paces. It's uh, the entry level of martial arts. So how about uh, their learning situation? They are quick to learn. Can you showcase some moves to us? Let's have a look. Is he also from uh, the Arequipa University? He's been here teaching martial arts since last semester, and the students really love him. This uh, five uh, step uh, martial art is of uh, greater popularity here. Students really love it. You see, they're really careful learning it, and they are smiling, they are happy. Some children are wearing the school uniforms, but some students are wearing yellow T-shirts. The white T-shirt is for the classes, and this yellow T-shirt is for sports. Uh, let's uh, don't disturb them anymore, and uh, let's go to visit other rooms. This house uh, is for the Chinese teaching, and uh, it can be moved. It's mobile. 
because uh, some of the buildings are dangerous. As the school established uh, these mobile rooms uh, for Chinese teaching. So we see some difficulties in infrastructure in this school. We hope uh, the local government can inject more resources and uh, invest more money. The new president uh, is in office and they will conduct new operations and work. The new president has more 57 percent of support. We hope the new president can invest more in education. Here is the class. Comparing to traditional uh, primary school in China, it's uh, very similar. We see paintings on the wall, and there are Chinese cards on the wall, and this is a Chinese note. Hello, teacher Lu. What are you teaching now? I'm teaching the self-introduction and the numbers. So what result you will meet? The plan is to teach them the simple uh, daily conversation and communication. They really love uh, our class, and they are very enthusiastic. They are learning where we are from. Our teachers are teaching with the Spanish. Yes, because we they are at entry level. I know you also teach the university students, so what's the difference between the primary students and uh, university students? The class uh, is more vivid in primary school. The university students is better at professional things, and they know more about Chinese culture. We can hear and these students are good at uh, numbers in Chinese, and they are using gestures. They are going to sing a Chinese children's song, Two Tigers. The song Two Tigers is originated from France. So there are different version, versions in the world in different languages. Excuse me. Hello. Sorry to disrupt you. Can you briefly introduce to us about the course? We see some Chinese posters and stickers on the wall. It takes one hour for each lesson, and we have teaching plan. We will prepare some uh, posters uh, to support their study. And these posters uh, are to uh, t tell them the traditional knowledge. And there are traditional decorations like Chinese note. This is also good for them to learn Chinese culture. Do you also teach them Chinese culture? Yes. Apart from this textbook, we will uh, tell them uh, Chinese culture. Like uh, this Chinese note, we will tell them this is a traditional Chinese decoration and it represents health and luckless. 
So, what's your comment on their learning? They've learned uh, uh, for more than one year, and they are very enthusiastic. But the time is limited. Let's test them. Hello. How are you? Can I talk with you? What's your name? My name is Sesson. Where are you from? I'm from Peru. He knows uh, some simple Chinese words. He is going to show some Chinese writings. This is uh, the alphabet, Chinese alphabet. These are numbers. Thank you. My name is Pierre. He says he loves uh, Chinese very much, but it is very difficult. And he loves the Chinese uh, children's songs. They are cute. This song actually has a Spanish version. Can you sing the Spanish version to us? This song has uh, different versions. It's very interesting. Thank you. Thank you, teacher. Goodbye. Thank you. We are now uh, back to the yard. We've experienced the class. You have uh, many Chinese uh, students and uh, Peruvian students. Do you find the Peruvian students have more and more interesting Chinese culture? Yes, I experienced that. I found they know more about the Chinese language and culture. In the past, they only knew Chinese restaurants, but later on, they know about the dynasties and emperors and even ancient poems of China. We feel that they know more about Chinese culture, and this can motivate them to learn Chinese language. And uh, they can plan their future in a better way and uh, work in some uh, Chinese companies in future. Because of the political and economic crisis in Peru, about six months ago, their economy is stagnated. 
But uh, after the new president's uh, into office and uh, with uh, the Belt and Road uh, Initiative of China, there will be more opportunities for Peru to develop. Between China and Peru, apart from economic cooperation, there is a cultural exchange as well. When I was uh, studying Spanish, there was uh, there were only two choices, uh, like Cuba and uh, the other one for us Spanish uh, students. But later on, we can learn in Peru. There is an MOU in education between China and Peru uh, since 2013. So after that, uh, there will be Chinese students to learn in Peru. And once they finish their studying here, they will come back to China, go back to China and enhance the communication between China and Peru. As you've been teacher in Confucius Institute, and later on you went back to China, and later on you went come back to Peru again. So what attracts you? Why you want to make your contributions? On one hand, I think China and Peru has a deep relations, and I want to broadcast Chinese culture abroad. I also want to broadcast the Peru culture to China. On the other hand, Peru is an ancient civilization. It has a splendid culture, which is worth learning from. Thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, thank you very much for representing Confucius Institute and uh, teach uh, Peruvian students uh, Chinese language and culture, and wish you success in work and life. And I hope in future the exchanges between China and Peru can win more fruitful results. That's the end of today's live streaming. Good night.